Welcome back everyone, Ali Casey here from Stat Oasis channel. Thank you for joining me. Today's video is a review of the new version of Strategy Quant X. This is version 132 uh, deployed on June 16. I just uh, downloaded it, installed it, tested it, and I'm gonna give you my feedback on it. So let's jump in. Okay, so let's see what we have in this new version. Now, uh, this is actually part of what I like uh, about SQX team. They are hard on uh, development. Uh, they are really very aggressive uh, in the development cycle. And you can see this is a build 132 on June 16 and over 200 reported issues and bugs fixed. And there are separate bugs and issues fixed with optimization and SPP. And we have two new features, the 2D scatter optimization charts, and we have the sequential optimization in the cross-check. So of course the bugs that are reported, you can follow the roadmap of the project. And this is what, what's been fixed. And by the way, you can also see the future. So this is build 133 expected in September. 2% done and also you can report, you can download the development if you want to be in the beta testers. In any case, uh, but to do for, <laughs> for the beta testing is only to experiment, but if you want to build strategies, then you have to stick with the uh, stable versions. So let's see what we have uh, here. So I downloaded the version, this is 1.3.2 and you can see 1.3.2.7.4.7. So to, to see the, uh, these features, we need to build some strategies. So I went and built some strategies, really simple one. I built a mean reversion strategy, RSI 2 below 30, we go long, and we exit when the RSI 2 greater than 70. And we have a stop loss of 100, and I'm using the ES, no commission, no slippage, and one contract at a time. And this is the strategy. So let me uh, save it to the retester. So let's put this as version one. So now the strategy is here and you can go to strategy config and just uh, apply the configuration. That's it. So now this is the strategy here and let's do uh, first the uh, you switch off. Uh, let's do the cross check. So this is the new sequential optimization. And actually there is a post on it here and you can uh, read about it. Uh, but of course you have me, so I'll explain it. Basically the sequential testing, it's actually really good in this area. So let me zoom in here and let's see. So, you know, when you have a, we have a parameter here and let me go back to the, uh, to the original strategy. So the RSI2, so this is one parameter and this 30 value is another parameter. The 70 is another parameter and the stop loss is another parameter. If I wanna test around all these, then let's say if, if you have 10 steps here and 10 here and 10 here and 10 here, then you multiply all these together. So that means you have, let's say 10,000. And if you have more uh, and more steps, then it will be in millions. And that's what we use genetic optimization is to reduce the number of optimization to a manageable number. Sequential optimization takes it another way. So it optimizes only one uh, parameter at a time. And when it finds the optimum parameter, it goes to the, to the next one. And how it finds the optimum parameter is like this. It looks for a stable area. So for example, if, if the parameter is here, then this is not stable. So, and here is an example. The red one is a stable uh, uh, parameter within a stable, within a region. And the way to do this is here. So let's go back to the retester. So you see, we're looking, the value distribution is up and down 50%. So in our case, we're taking, let's say 30, we're going up, 50% down 50% and the number of steps is 50. Of course, all these are, you can change them. And 
then we are filtering on 80% of those. We want them to pass the stability test. And then the number of results in a stable area is 7 and fitness 20. That, this is the stable area. That means I'm looking for seven bars where none of them is 20% away from the maximum. So none of these seven bars, any uh, continuous, uh, any sequential seven bars, none of them is 20% uh, away from the maximum. And let me now uh, test and you can see the, uh, and of course it's gonna pick the recommended parameters and I'll show you the difference in a second. So we will pick the results. Let's do this, test, and it should be here. So this is the RSI period, and you can see here the original value is 2. And after the optimization, this is the stable region. It's the uh, number 5. So number 5 is within a 7 bars, is inside a 7 bars that none of them is 20% away from the maximum. And then the stop loss is this one, which uh, the original 100 is 100. The original, sorry, the original value is 100. And you can see that we have uh, 50 above, so that's 150, and 50 below, that's 50. And between those, this is a stable region where uh, the uh, 139 sits between 7, sits inside a 7 bar, that's none of them, 20% away from the maximum. Now, of course, you might say here, okay, but what about our strategy has this 30% 30 and value and 70% and this is only the, the RSI 2 and the stop loss so in this case you want to do then the uh, your own setting and with your own setting we know we have period and we have constants and we have the exit which is the stop loss and profit targets only used so now if I pick this, it will pick everything. And let's do the test again. So this is the second one. And now we have all the parameters. So the 30 original, which is when we say the RSI 2 below 30, uh, that went to 21. So the 30 is between 15 and 45. And this is the, the stable area. And then we have the 70. And again, 50%, that's 35 to 105. And again, this is 35 to 105. And this is the stable area. And for the uh, uh, 2 and 5 is the same. That's the 2%, uh, less than 2. And uh, the stop loss 100, again, is the same. And then you can apply the optimized value to the strategy. Of course, you can see that this is right on the edge. I might pick some somewhere here. And you can do that. You can say, oh, okay, so uh, the stable area here, it's maybe 60 or 82. And th there's nothing wrong with that. So this is the sequential optimization. And it's basically, it speeds up the uh, process instead of doing the SPP. Now, there are some caveats with this, which is the see, stable area will depend, of course, on the parameters you pick. So uh, obviously, for example, here, if I pick, uh, let's say 20% up and down, then we will get different numbers. And you can see now it's uh, different numbers we're getting. And also, if you pick uh, different numbers in the beginning, Let's say if I pick 15 and 85. Okay, so if we pick 15 and 85, and let's run the strategy, and then let's save it to the retester, and let's call this strategy 2. So now uh, let's apply uh, strategy 2. And then let's pick it to do the uh, 
the sequential testing switch it on and let's start the optimization and we can see now that again strategy 2 will have uh, different uh, options than uh, this one than this one than this one so you can see here 30 and 70 went to 21 and 95 and here it went to 16 and 97 so yes it is close but it is different and also between this one this is 24 and 80 and this is 16 and 97 so th this is the caveat remember the the value you start with and also so you can see that the value you start with and also the distribution values here will affect uh, what you pick, uh, what the strategy is going to show you at the end, uh, which is uh, obvi obviously there is no way uh, to go about this. Uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, from the start, you pick RSI, you pick two. So uh, to me, it's faster. And maybe you can weed out some bad strategies we go before going to SPP. Uh, so it's a very good addition, and I like it very much. Now let's do the other new uh, addition, which is the uh, 2D scatter plot and the 2D uh, chart. And this can be done with a. So let's start. So let's pick again same strategy. And in, now let's do the SPP. And you can see now that uh, in the optimization profile, we will have a 2D chart. And let's put this down. And we have the scatter plot. And of course, you can pick uh, whatever uh, category you want. Uh, the problem is this uh, blue dot is really, I don't know if it's blue or dark purple, but it's really, it's not a good color on the dark gray. So SQX team needs to fix this. Again, it's the same the one here. Maybe light blue or white uh, or any bright color. As you can see, that's the scatter plot. And again, with the two, uh, 2D chart, you can pick uh, this is, for example, the RSI, and let's say I can pick the Kalman ratio based on the RSI period, or maybe uh, let's do a number, uh, one loss ratio. You can see it. So it's a simple representation than the 3D one. So you can, uh, they're both, the, of course, they represent different view. Uh, I would say the 2D is very simple, and the scatter plot is, is nice. The only thing I want is in the scatter plot is the MAE. So I cannot find the MAE here, which is to me, it's the most important one. So SQX team, if you're watching this, please do add the MAE and MFE uh, to the variables here. And that's it. That's version 132. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of the new additions? Great, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I do really appreciate it. Don't forget to smash the like button, hit the notification bell, and subscribe to the channel as this will help the channel grow. I would like also to thank the Strategy Quantex development team to keep pushing the software and uh, squashing all the bugs in the meantime because stability is actually more important than new features. So until the next video, stay safe and I'll see you soon.